Salt, a common mineral composed primarily of sodium chloride. When we think of salt, we generally think of it as a food additive or something we sprinkle on our walkways in the wintertime. But Jesus tells us in the book of Matthew that you are the salt of the earth. Jesus was making an extremely profound statement to his followers here. You see, being salt has nothing to do with saying anything or doing anything at all. When we look at salt, we recognize that just being present allows it to affect everything around it. It affects its environment because salt has a very unique set of properties compared to everything that it makes contact with in its environment. But it is Luke's gospel that actually tells us what Jesus actually meant when he said, you are the salt of the earth. What you are about to hear in this message will explain why you've likely heard so many messages on Jesus' meaning of salt over the years, as you've likely heard from pastors. When they read from Matthew's Gospel, it doesn't address its true meaning, thus they have added various meanings to it. They may tell you that it adds some kind of flavoring or some kind of preservative. We've heard this countless times. But Luke makes it very clear. Luke 14, 34 to 35. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill, but men throw it out. By understanding the purposes of salt in the time of Jesus, and well before that, its true use will give us a much clearer context. Salt was collected along the Dead Sea, which contains high concentrations of salt. There are many types of salts, but the main one of use at the time was potassium chloride, or potash. If you are a gardener, then you know that every plant needs three kinds of fertilizer. It needs nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Phosphate develops the roots nitrates to develop the leaves, and potash to develop the flowers and the fruit. A balanced fertilizer will include these three. Thus, the salt used from the Dead Sea was used as a fertilizer, and Jesus made reference to salt as a fertilizer. The word for the land used here is the same used for the word earth. It is used to make good things grow. Then he mentions the dung hill, that is manure, human manure. In ancient times of Israel, they had an area with dirt as the bathroom to empty your bowels. You dug a small hole and you did your business. Then there was a small box there filled with salt from the Dead Sea. Then they would take a handful of the salt and sprinkled it onto your waist then covered it up with the dirt. The salt acted as a disinfectant to stop contamination. Deuteronomy 23.13 provides some instruction on how to bury your excrement. Now when you put the two together, you can see that salt promoted the growth of good things and inhibited the things you didn't want to grow. This is a vivid picture. The message, therefore, is that we Christians are to be the salt of the soil. Jesus was drawing a picture of a profound truth. As the body of Christ, our presence on earth is to stop the bad things from spreading and will at the same time promote the growth of good godly things. And we are that salt, not by actively saying or doing, not so much but by simply being, by being totally different from our environment. But there has to be a sufficient amount of salt to stop the contamination in society from spreading. It doesn't take just a few grains, but a whole handful. More Christians need to be present as an active agent in the world. We might be able to win an occasional battle by lobbying, by protest, or prayer. 
but it is an insufficient amount of salt to make sweeping change. We used to be a majority in any given country here in the West, and because of this, we didn't have the depravity and wickedness taking place, did we? But as Christianity began to decline, so too did the nation's saltiness. So this message is, first, to spread the gospel. We need more to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ and to, essentially, be added to the quantity of salt out there for God to make his move in this world. Second, for salt to be an effective agent, it must come into direct contact with everything around it. It has no use sitting in a box, or only in a room like a church, or at home. It must be out there, in the world, in your city, in your community, making contact with the secular world. That means the salt must be in direct contact with the dirt or with the earth. Don't be seeking out a place where you can be with other Christians on a constant basis. God has placed you right where you are so that you can be the agent that can permeate and saturate those around you. And that is why Christ calls us to be the salt of the earth.